at the moment helps me get my time in, helps me my reaction speed, and also allows me to obviously see what works, you know, and, and obviously what doesn't. So for me, you know, tough sparring is good, and I'm always trying to find sort of the best in the country. You know, I've got a great, great teammates, and we're always obviously going at it. But you know, it's always great to find other people, the best in the UK, to go and you know put yeah. yourself against and, and see what. Hey guys, this is John Anik from the UFC. You're watching the Fight Week Show. Please subscribe, not now, but right now. Subscribe to the Fight Week Show. We'll see you guys on the road soon. What's happening, Fight Week family? What's going on? We have Louis the Vanilla Gorilla Sutherland in the house. Uh, we've been trying Ooh. to get this together for a minute. Uh, he's been busy with the family, but we're glad we got you on the show now. How you doing, my brother? All good, man. All good. I'm... Um... Yeah, I'm feeling really good, man. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Man, I'm so I'm so glad you're here. Uh, for for people that don't know who you are, uh, please uh, tell them, you know, tell tell everybody a little bit about yourself and you know what promotion you fight off and stuff. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So obviously my name's Louis Sutherland, aka the Vanilla Gorilla. <laughs> um I'm currently signed to PFL, Professional Fighters League. I'm a heavyweight, uh, currently four and one. So yeah, yeah. That's me. Um, Louis, we we really really uh, thank you for for joining us for joining us today, man. Uh, one thing that you know we we wanted to that I I've been thinking I wanted to ask you what's it like fighting for 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 promotion like PFL because PFL PFL is 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 a big big promotion and um, you know they got they got themselves you know a, a lot a lot of top fighters over there. Uh, what's what's it like fighting for promotion like that? No, of course, yeah, no, you're, you're right. It's it's a massive promotion. Um, probably one of the uh, I would say one of the biggest in the world at the moment. One of the, the big three in terms yeah. of in in terms, yeah, you're right. I mean, PFL is a massive promotion. It's um, it's one of the biggest in the world um, currently. It's a great. It's obviously a great opportunity for someone like myself, who's obviously fairly fresh into their professional career. Um, to yeah. be able to get on the show that early, um, it's, it's it's great, you know. Um, it's yeah. great for UK MMA as a whole um, to allow people like myself with sort of, you know, um, smaller records and stuff to get on big shows like this and, and yeah. showcase what we're about, you know. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's fantastic. It's a great opportunity. And, um, yeah, I just make me long it continue. Yeah, man. I, 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 you're four on one and we love the the excitement and the way the way you fight your your fighting style is is it says what is i mean it says in your nickname really you know what i mean you go out there yeah, that's and right. you swang and bang you know what I mean? it's all about yeah, getting out there swinging and banging man and um we, we it, love man. it as, as fight fans this you know this is this is this is what we love to see um what's been like your your hardest say fight camp till right now making into the cage and what's that like for you a lot of my fight camps have been quite similar to be fair i, I train mm -hmm. hard regardless regardless of the opponent right. um you know the, the level of you know the pfl or let's say fight star championship this is a you know regional show no matter the promotion or the opponent i, I train super hard re regardless um in terms of my toughest camp i would say they're all pretty similar but the last camp I had was probably the longest camp I've had. So therefore, mm. it was probably the toughest because I haven't really had a break since my yeah. professional debut, if that makes sense. Ah. So since I've made my debut, it feels like I've constantly been in a camp. You know, I've probably mm. taken two weeks off max in between um, and then I'm right back to it and I'm right back to, you know, in the camp. So, and this was probably my longest. So mm. I finished, I had my last fight in April. And then as soon as I finished that, I probably had like a 15 week camp, maybe a 12 week camp just to obviously yeah. try and, you know, you know, bring their levels up and, you know, get as good as I can in, in, in those, those, uh, those 12 weeks. So yeah, that's, I would say it's probably been the toughest, but not so much physically, just more mm. mentally staying in the zone for that long, you know, mm. that's probably more so what it is. But yeah, got we, you, we, got we you, train hard regardless. Yeah. Got you. Um, with your fighting style, and obviously with your fight camps and stuff, especially with sparring, how do you train in a way that allows career longevity? Um, 
do, do you know do you spar that often do you do you go hard in sparring or do you, like so, some people go all out sparring some people don't spar at all um we, we've heard max holloway say he, he, he don't spar at all and some people go that's hard right, yeah. in sparring. like how do how do you deal with that sort of stuff yeah and obviously that's a, that's a great question because everyone has their own you know and obviously someone like max holloway he's been in the game a long time obviously knows what works for him you know knows what works best and for me i'm still trying to figure that out you know what works best for me uh, you know uh being you know five fight a uh, five, five fights deep into a professional career i'm still fig figuring out what's best but um in terms of the you know what i do at the moment is we have once a week we have super i say super hard sparring but hard sparring we go for it you know we're not mm -hmm. trying to kill each other but we're going hard you know um technically but you know we, we, you know we're going hard we're trying to implement our game plan impose our will against our um, teammates and so, and so forth and obviously sometimes it becomes a bit of a chess match because you know we train with these guys day in day out we all know what you know what my attributes are or what you know my training partner's attributes are so it, it's a bit of a chess a chess match you know but then obviously uh, you know, at the end of the week say we have more of a technical spa so it's more about flowing and you know timing your entries and things like that so there is a fine balance and to be fair, I think what works best for me at the moment is tough sparring. I like hard rounds. Um, mm. And in the future, that might change, you know. I might, you know, I might think, I might wake up one day and go, well, I've, I've, <laughs> I've taken too many punches. I'm just going to start doing technical sparring. I'm not spar at all. But I think for me, sparring at the moment helps me get my time in, helps me, my reaction speed, and also allows me to obviously see what works, you know, and obviously what doesn't. So for mm. me, you know, tough sparring is good. And I'm always trying to find sort of the best in the country. You know, I've got a great, great teammates and we're always obviously going at it. But, you know, it's always great to find other people, the best in the UK to go and, you know, put yeah. yourself against and, and see where you're at. Yeah, I know, I know your gym, uh, you know, and your coaches mean, mean a lot to you. Can you tell us, like, what sets your gym apart from most of these other gyms that are around and what they do specially for you to that? that caters for your particular needs? Yeah, so obviously, in, in terms of the gym that I'm at the moment, um, yeah. it's, um, it's great because what sets us apart from probably any other gym is the amount of big guys we have. Right. So if you, you come down to the gym, you know in most other gyms, you probably get two, maybe three max technical heavyweights or light heavyweights that are going to be good at a high level. You come to my gym, I would say every single person there is at a high level and they're all probably over, you know, walking around over 100 kilos um, bar a couple that are sort of middleweights and so forth that are walking around in sort of the mid-90s. And so they're all big boys, you know, they're all fighting the top promotions. I think that's what sets us apart from the rest is we have all, all of this, you know, on our doorstep. We don't have to go far afield and look for that, even though it's good too. But like, you know, you hear a lot of these top level guys having to bring people over or people in to their camps for them to be able to get the best sparring and the, and the best training partners. But we have that, you know, the amount of big guys that we have on our doorstep that aren't just big guys and just big for nothing, if that makes sense. They're all, you know, very high level, you know, up and coming. Um, also, obviously, veterans and so forth. So it's, it's a big mix and, you know, we don't have to go looking for that anywhere else. It, you know, it's all on the doorstep. So it's great. It's, you know, it's, it's a great team to be around. And, and yeah, obviously, you know, we're, you know, I'm grateful that I don't have to obviously travel the world and find big guys that are, that are, that are good. I've got them on the doorstep. But then again, obviously, you, yeah. you, get, you get so used to your training partners. As I said, it becomes a chess match. So it's always good to, to go here, there and everywhere and, and train with the best of the best. So. Yeah. Yeah. You, you you said something about about chess match. And there's there's something that really gets me with heavyweights and chess matches, right? Because you love finishes, right? We mm. we we we've seen you, you got four finishes uh on your record. And what does that feel like getting that finish? Just seeing another man go down, eyes rolling, ref pulling you off. What what's that rush like? Is there anything like it? What's that feel like? Man, it's it's a feeling like no other. Honestly, there's there's <laughs> you know, uh, it's the only way I can describe it is like it's euphoric when you know there's you know 
another man who's trained so hard. Um, it's like obviously man on man is is sort of like a primal kind of thing, right? I don't know. That's the kind of way I would see it. It's like when you get yeah. two guys, two athletes, or whatever it might be. Um, fair enough. Obviously, look, wrestling and stuff, fantastic. You know, wrestling's hard. It's good. It, it, it's it's a great part of MMA. But you know, to have two guys stand there and go at it, and put, yeah. for someone to put someone else's lights out, another big man. Yeah, it's, it's definitely euphoric, and it's, it's a feeling like no other. <laughs> so, um, you know, obviously, you'll probably find a lot of guys in the sport they chase that. And especially heavyweights, yeah. everyone hits hard in uh, you know at, at heavyweight. But it's like you know to see someone's lights go out is it's quite a eu- euphoric feeling. So <laughs> um, many I, many I, more I, to come. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're definitely yeah. going to be looking forward to that. You know, we yeah. love, like I said, we love the way you fight. We love your style. I'm talking about you. You mentioned the fighting style just now in wrestling. What would you say is your um, not so favorite? MMA, MMA style of fighting? It's tough because I, lo- I, lo- I love to wrestle and I, I love wrestling. You know, people obviously see me and they think, oh, he's a banger and so mm. forth. They'll probably look at my last fight and think, ooh, you know, <laughs> wrestling is, is not his favourite thing. But, you know, mm. I, I come from a stable or a gym where wrestling's is one of our main things. Mm. But um, I obviously love to stand and bang and, 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 and take people's heads off. But, the hardest part of them, is, I wouldn't say it's my worst, or I would say the hardest part is obviously the wrestling, man. You know, um, whether you know you're on the defensive or you're attacking, it's it's probably it is it's the hardest part of MMA, and that's why so many good wrestlers get to the top of MMA is because if you're good at it, it can take you a long way, you know. And if you're not taking damage along the way, great, you know, you have a longer career. So mm. I wouldn't say it's my worst or whatever. I can say that's the hardest. <laughs> that's all because uh, you know, uh, you know, to stand in the middle and and go toe to toe is something I find quite easy, and I, you know I thrive off of that. But um, the other stuff, obviously, is hard work, and I'm not I'm afraid of hard work. But yeah, it's just yeah. the hardest part of me. So that's what I would say. Fanta- fantastic. I, I I just wanted to um ask you because everybody, you know, they they, they have they have targets. They they set a time plan for themselves and where they want to be in so many years. Like in th- within 3 to 5 years, you know, where 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 would you you being so young as well and and you know coming up, where would you like to to see yourself? Would you, do you would, would you know would you like to to be at the top of the game in an elite promotion like UFC um you know in that time span? Yeah, for sure. I mean, obviously, you know, when I first started the sport <clears throat> UFC is always obviously the pinnacle. And then when you're speaking to sort of casual fans in the street, you know, they refer to MMA as UFC. They don't really know the difference <laughs> That's true. kind of thing, you know. Um, mm. So U- UFC is definitely the pinnacle. But obviously I'm grateful now that we have the likes of the PFL. You know, PFL wasn't really a household name when I first started MMA. And, you know, mm. but now they are. So, I mean, whether that's PFL and, you know, I'm the heavyweight champion of PFL or whatever it might be, European champion, I, I don't know, UFC champion, you know, whatever it might be, but just know that I'm, you know, I'm riding this to the wheels fall off. So, you know, yeah, I'm going to go as far as I can and I'm sure I'll get, you know, pretty far. So, we're, yeah, whether that's UFC, gonna... PFL, you know, I'm going to be definitely at, at an elite level um, and I'm going to be taking people's heads off at that level as well, for sure. You know, for real, for real. Uh, uh, look, we, we, we're definitely going to be, be supporting you on that on that journey. We're going to be with you on that journey. And, we, you know, we're going to do everything we can, post you, retweet you, whatever we need to do yeah, to, to, you know, to push your profile yeah, yeah. out there. We're, we're definitely going to be on that journey with you. And thank you very much for your time. I know your time is valuable. Um, we, we've got a few more minutes. So I That's just cool, want to switch man. gears. Yeah, of course. I was going to say I, I just, as well, look, if it rolls over, man, no problem. I've got it on pause anyway, so... Yeah. Yeah, little yeah, one yeah. in bed now, and I've got okay. this on board, so hey, hey, listen, we're all right, man. <laughs> a lot of people need to know this, yeah. This brother here is a Spurs fan, he's a Tottenham fan, <laughs> as well as a fighter. And, um, you know, I definitely wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be dropping any any uh, any Tottenham uh, banter in person if you like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but look, let's talk, let's talk, no, let's we're talk friends, about man. It's good, we're yeah, friends, we're friends, it's all good. Yeah, I, I like that, I like that. I feel, I feel better about that now, I feel safe and I feel secure about that now. That's, That's good, man. Well. Um, look, I want to talk to you about your football club and, you know, Premier League in, in, you know, in general, because it's one thing talking about your fight, fight career, but, you know, 
football is also another passion of yours. You know, and I, I, I know how much you love your club. Um, what have you made of your start to to the season, your signings, and 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 your manager? Yeah, I mean, it was just great refreshing to talk about something different than, than obviously just the <laughs> fighting. But yeah, you know, um, yeah, I'm a Spurs fan, and you know, like any probably big club or top six club or whatever you want to call it always has high hopes at the start of the season or like pre-season in the summer they're making signings same as Arsenal you know Arsenal fans you know Liverpool fans everyone's always got high hopes yeah. and then obviously you know you get to the season you might drop a few points and it becomes a little bit like oh, that's the same old Spurs or whatever but you know this season we've got a, a serial winner you know for a manager for one he knows how to obviously set teams up to win. So that's great. That's a good start. We made some mm. good signings. So it looks like the board's backing him. Whereas obviously that's been a problem of ours in the past. We've been more of a feeder club rather than keep keeping hold of players. So keeping hold of the likes of Harry Kane and Son for another season goes to show that, you know, we are serious about maybe pushing for whether it's, you know, you know, the, the League Cup or the FA Cup or because I don't think we'll be challenging for the title this season. I think Manchester City is a bit too good for for the rest of the rest of the um, rest of the teams, you know. But obviously, I know you guys have made a good start as well. But yeah, yeah, I'm 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 happy with it. I just I don't want to get my hopes up too much, and then <laughs> I don't want to get my hopes up too much, and then end up falling flat on my face. So <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with we're you. This we're is, good. This is, we're steady at the this... moment. This this is something that you know as football fans you try and hold back the expectation, but at the same time you you have a certain expectation yeah. from your club. Yeah, you have a certain yeah, expectation yeah. For, for you know for your club for the outlay for the money that you know for the money that you guys put down on on and uh, on players and yeah. the players you're able to keep. You you got world class players, and this is coming from Arsenal fan. You know, in Kane Kane scores against us. He could be having the worst game, yeah, in the world, and he'll turn up at the Emirates and still find a way to score against us. Kane always does it. You got Son, you know, he's, he's one of the best, one of the best players in the in the in the Premier League. Full stop. You know, For joint sure, yeah. um, joint Golden Boot winner last season. Last um, season yeah. How did you feel? How did you feel peeping us to? Cause obviously, I was hurt, but peeping us to Champions League by a point. Last season, well, how did how did that make you feel? Like you, you guys must have had a party about that. I was fuming, mate. I was gutted. Right, how did you feel, man? It's strange, yeah. Um, it make it obviously makes most Tottenham fans feel good and stuff, but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, of course, obviously, everyone was happy. You know, um, of course, every if we beat you or you beat us, it's always going to be. You're going to be happy. We're going to be happy if we beat you. If we finish higher than you in the league, it's great. Um, and yeah, I was I was buzzing because of that. But then again, on the flip side, it's like, should we really be celebrating just because we finished one place above you? You know, it, it happened a, a couple of seasons ago, I think, when um you guys finished three or four positions below us, but you guys won the FA Cup. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's like, ah, oh, yeah, we finished above you, but we yeah, we need some silverware. <laughs> And that's the only only difference that that's ever going to make. I mean, you know, having more points than you isn't really going to do much for me personally. You know, having silverware and being able to gloat for a season or two is something that we need. Uh, you know, not having, you know, not winning a trophy for I don't know how many years it's been now. Since like 2000. I believe, I believe was, Martin Martin Yo like, was on, Martin Yo was your last was it your last something. guy to, to do it. Yeah, it was, and we beat Chelsea, I think, in the final. Um, yeah, 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 it come off all gates face into the yeah, yeah. I remember it, but yeah. that's the last time. So it's great to finish above you, but like what you done a few seasons ago, you finished below us, huh, but you won the FA Cup. We got something for the cup, <laughs> you know. And, come and, on, yeah. So yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure a lot of your fans, you know, I got loads of Tottenham fans, and it's always one of the things that they they don't care if they if they come twentieth in the league. They they want something for that cabinet. They want something, yeah, you know. They want something to, to to celebrate, and you know, this is the whole reason why we're football fans because you yeah. want success for your club and you want something to show for for that success. And um, I I definitely definitely get it. Um, 
you got you mentioned it earlier on you got a world-class manager in in antonio conte antonio conte is you know he's regarded as one of the best out there yeah. he's a serial winner and everywhere he's been he's won something and if he doesn't right. feel backed he walks away i can almost say this is the first manager that i really feel he's got down and leave you by the balls would you agree one thousand one thousand percent and i'm glad he has because you know all of the managers because <laughs> because you look you see when we i think we employed is it nuno spirit spirit of santos or yeah. santo or however you pronounce his name yeah we employed him mm. he was a good manager for wolves but is he really going to be walking into the boardroom at tottenham demanding this demanding that you know probably not yeah. someone like conte He's been at, you know, the biggest clubs in the world. You, you know, you can't pull the war over his heart, you know, over his eyes. He walks mm. into the boardroom. He demands this. If he doesn't get it, he, you know, you know where the blame goes. The blame goes onto the board, and mm. they have to take the brunt of it. And I think they they have started to realise that if they want to if they want to win, you need to back a winner. And you know, hopefully they're you know they're backing him nicely now, and it's down to him and the players to, to obviously fulfil that and make the fans happy. So fingers yeah, crossed. Man. I mean, <laughs> you you made you made some signings, some some astute signings, in my opinion. I was yeah. jealous of this one, Bisuma. I was really jealous of that one. I wanted, I yeah, wanted. I thought it was so a bargain bad. as well. It's a bargain. A bargain at twenty five million. Yeah. Like, yeah. You, you have no idea bringing in uh, someone like uh, Dex Spence from Nottingham Forest, fantastic yeah. fullback, young talent. Um, yeah. Uh, you you know you brought in people like Romero Kulusevski that came in a little bit from last season and Bentaco. Mm. There's that you know th these are really really good signings that yeah. works for the managers. Not just any That's player, right. you know they 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 all fit into that system, including Ivan Perisic as well. Everybody laughed at Perisic. You guys getting Perisic, but looking at what he's doing in the league right now, um, is such a revelation. And with all the signings that you that you've brought in, my question to you is what's your expectation for this season? I know the title is beyond you, but what's what's your expectation? Man, if we could challenge for the title, that'd be great. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I think definitely this season it has to be some sort of silverware. We have we have to go for it. Um, you know, again, the Champions League is anyone's. You know, you could be out of form in in your domestic league and be flying in, in Europe. So the Champions League's obviously we can't write that off. I know I might sound a little bit crazy, but you know we've got a good, good enough team to do it, a good enough manager to push yeah, all the way to the, the final been to at the least. Final before, yeah, yeah. So um, maybe this time he might be the difference to push us over the post, a more experienced manager, and other players have been there. So that's one. It has to be some sort of silverware, you know. Even if we, you know, I think we're going to finish in the top four, you know, for sure. You know, it should be a banker really, um, but it has to be silverware, top four. You know, for the next five years, isn't going to be good enough unless there's silverware in, you know, in the trophy cabinet. So whether that's the League Cup, we push for that from the very beginning. We don't take any chances. FA mm -hmm. Cup, whatever it might be, we need we just need to push for that. And I guess it will satisfy most of the top, well, all of the you know the Tottenham supporters. So mm -hmm. you know, I know you guys are good in the FA Cup. So. And you're looking good this season, so it's scary, it's scary, you know. Yeah, yeah, man. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be a long it's gonna be a long and lovely season for for, for yeah. all of us, for everybody involved. Um, yeah. I wanted to ask you one last thing uh, relating to football. We just cool, seen yeah. Thomas. We just seen Thomas Tuchel got, get sacked today. He got the bullet yeah. today from the Todd Bowley cons Consortium, and um, we we saw the fiery match that both of you had. Uh, you know, between Tottenham and, and Chelsea. Yeah. That, was a, that was a really, really good game for the neutral. The way it ended, both managers getting cards. Um, yeah. What did you make of this this sacking? Do you think it's too early? Especially the window only just closing the other day and they brought in players to suit Tuchel and the, the, the new appointment that they, they after as well. What what do you make of like uh, Graham Potter uh, being being uh, touted for as the new Chelsea manager? Yeah, so it's a great question, to be fair. Obviously, for one, I love that passion and that fieriness. You need that as a competitor. You know, mm. you know nobody wants to lose. A draw to one of your rivals feels like a loss anyway. So, you know, it's always going to be heated against Spurs and Chelsea. And I'm glad we have someone on the sideline that shows that passion. You know, because that's what we show when we go to support. You know, you need someone to replicate that. Um, 100%. So that's great. You know, that's great for a start. And from what I've seen from Chelsea and the new owners and stuff like that and their recruitment, 
I don't think they have much of a clue what they're doing, you know. Um, I think the, the, the new guys, obviously they will have experienced people around them, but if they're ultimately making the decisions, it just seems like Abama Yang was a strange signing. I know they needed a number nine, but is he a real, is he an out-and-out out number nine that's going to give them 20 goals? I don't think so. Um, you know, he, he's more sort of a, a winger. I don't think he's going to be great down the middle for them. And yeah. just, yeah, it feels like they've sort of been panicked a little bit in the window and you know, Sterling was a, was a decent signing. I, you know, I'll take Ster- Sterling at Spurs. He was, yeah. he was a good signing. You know, he good creates signing, chances. Yeah. Um, good signing. But yeah, just uh, the sacking, is it a little bit too early? Possibly, yeah. I mean, Tuchel's a good manager. He's proved he's proved that he's a good manager. He just probably needed a tiny, a little bit more time. Um, uh, yeah. Just, and in terms of the new appointment, yeah, I mean, to be fair, it's great. I mean, you have to give a managers like that. Um, I mean, what he's done at Brighton, um, Graham Potter, it's amazing, really. But I think they're still in the top four. I know it's only like six games in, but look what they've done towards the end of last season. He had them playing good football. Um, you know, they're playing nice football. They're not just, you know, booting it long. But, you know, they're playing out from the back and they're creating chances. They're scoring goals. And obviously that's down to his playing system and the recruitment that they've done. So I think, you know, someone like him wouldn't be a bad bet. But again, it's one of those things, if they want to be pushing for the title and they want to be pushing for the Champions League, they might just need someone with a tiny bit more experience in Europe. Um, you know, he, he probably will do very well in the in the Premier League. But then there's obviously a team like Chelsea want to be pushing for the Champions League and that type of stuff. But does he have the experience at the, the high level, you know, to, you know, grind out 1-0 wins against... Yeah. You know, Italian teams and things like that. And, you know, it's, that's, that's where it comes a bit tricky. So, it'd be yeah. good to see, though. It's good to give those types of managers a foot in the door, you know. Um, yeah. You see what Vieira is doing at Crystal Palace as well. Like, oh. you know, these, these, these types of managers. Um, they, they definitely need a chance. Those, those sort of managers. Those sort of managers need a chance. Oh, man. Thank you so, so much, uh, Louis, the Vanilla Gorilla. Sutherland, thank you so much for your time. Hopefully, no problem, down the man. line, uh, we can we can bring you back on the channel, break yeah, down sure. fights with us, talk some yeah. football, perhaps, and uh, you know something apart from talking about your your, your career yourself. Which yeah, I think of course, obviously that's great. Really obviously, respect. the fans want to hear that, but yeah, yeah, man, I'm happy to speak about this. You know, the other stuff, and it, get, it allows people to get to know me a bit better as well. And yeah. it's great, obviously, having you. You're a football fan as well, so it's great having that that conversation so yeah no thanks for having me on thanks for reaching out and being patient as well i was away with the little one and and whatever no. so yeah i've obviously just got back now so no, i appreciate you being patient and yeah definitely we'll do this again um yeah definitely yeah sure. it's all good you know i got your details you got mine i'm gonna reach out to you and uh we're gonna let you know how, you know when when your interview gets released so we can cross promote it together and all that stuff cool man uh, yeah, yeah thank you thank you very no problem, much man. and um uh, we are going to end it right here and until the next video, hasta la vista people, salute. Yo guys, this is Adrian Yanez telling you to use those handles. Hit, click, like, and subscribe. Fuck yeah dudes, if y'all don't do it man, fucking catch the hands bro.